Welcome back to The Breakdown and the final instalment of The Greatest All Blacks 15, where we wrap things up with the back three of wing and fullback. The panel of myself, Ricky Swinnell, Ken Labert and Phil Gifford picked Jonah Lomu on the left wing and Christian Cullen at fullback. And you supported that in huge numbers, with Cullen getting more votes than any other player in any position. But on the right wing, we were split over Jeff Wilson and Brian Williams, and you went for Doug Howlett, your Blacks' leading try scorer. So again, we called on Sir Graham Henry, and he sided with BG Williams. So the greatest All Black back three is Jonah Lomu, Brian Williams, and Christian Cullen. Jonah simply was the most dangerous rugby player I think that's played the game. When you've got 120 kgs and you're six foot five, uh, you're going to do some damage. Jonah Lomu is is the only global superstar we'll ever have in rugby. Phenomenal. Um, yeah, such a big, powerful beast of a man who could run faster than anyone else. And to have a guy like that alongside you, you're like, man, this is easy. And the thing about him was he scored tries that no one else would ever score. He could run around them, he could run over them, he could run inside them. Lomu charging! The big man's done it again! He played in the County Sevens team, and I'd already been told about how great this kid was, and he was a number eight. And we watched him, Earl and I, and we talked about it, and then almost together we said, how would he go on the wing? As a loose forward, he wasn't going to be much bigger and certainly not tougher than a lot of the top international loose forwards. So his great ability would be nullified to an extent. But if we were good enough to develop him as a wing, then he could be something the world's never seen. Fortunately, that's the way it turned out. Lobo. You look at guys that couldn't tackle him, and I was like, surely you must be able to, you know, if you just get in low, and, and I remember the first day I played against them. I tried tackling him twice, and I got nowhere near him. And my respect for everyone that had been uh, shunted off uh, went up a lot, I tell you. He was so giving, you know, of the time. But it come a success, you know, and he shared that with everyone. And I think that was, you know, a big part of him. Handed away by Umanga, they're shifting it smartly. Now Lomu's in the clear. One on one. Regan comes across. He's got support. El Latini. Fantastic. I don't think there ever will be a, a player like Jonah who can, you know, you can go to America or go to Brazil and they know who Jonah Lomu is. When you walk um, down Leicester Square with Jonah Lomu, buses stop, you know, crowds start, start to form. Yeah, it was, it was tough watching him go through that sometimes, you know, and, and you just kind of get a gauge of shucks, you know, how well known is someone. We never saw him in his peak. We never saw that. He was at 60, 70, 80% of his ability when he had his illness. If he had ever been able to go to 100%, so he didn't have that, what would we have seen? Wilson gets in the action. Now Lomu, the big fellow, can Terry do it again? We saw a colossus as he was, but I think he could have even achieved greater things than we saw. I mean, that's how good he was. Brian Williams going backwards, looking for space, and through and getting it. Great try, Brian Williams. All those guys you mentioned, I've got no show. <laughs> <laughs> JK and, and Jonah and... <laughs> 1970, a young, Auckland Pacific Island player and a law student who was doing his studies uh, out of Auckland University called Brian George Williams was forced to tour South Africa along with three other players who was declared an honorary white. In some ways it's a disgrace um, but that image of BG in South Africa at that time it was segregated so um, those honorary whites from New Zealand weren't allowed access to public transport, they weren't allowed access to health services, had anything, weren't allowed access to, to all of those things that come along with, with apartheid. And BG became a beacon of hope, a beacon for fairness, for justice and for equality. 
he was a young man at that time and took so much on his shoulders um, in, in a divided country. He was so high profile, he was so good, there was so much attention on him. Unbelievable sidestep in the Ungol area to get that try down mm. to the post mm -hmm. in South Africa. But in terms of the impact and changing the course of the history of our game, for me, Brian Williams, the greatest right wing the game has seen. It finds Cameron with a beautiful pass. Now they're lining up to score this one. Cameron might do it himself. Yes, he will. A player running those sort of lines, the sheer pace he could run at and change direction without changing pace. We haven't seen that before. He was certainly the most exciting uh, fullback I've, I've ever seen. Now he's got to do it on his own. Isn't he just brilliant? Hugely optimistic. Cully, you know, you, you can't attack from behind your goal line against some of the best players in the world and score like he did without thinking he could do it and knowing he could do it. Having him around, he could create these things because he was so strong um, in the tackle that he was able to wriggle out of things. Um, and um, you know, as we've seen in his highlight clips, you know, create something from nothing. Looking to get into the gap, Clark, beautiful pass. Cullen, Cullen on the outside, they won't stop him. Christian Cullen, brilliant try, outstanding. I got a trophy off Cully when I was seven. I shook his hand and I got the photo at home and Oh, this is Christian Cullen, man. This guy stepped everyone. No one could tackle him. He was amazing. And as a smaller guy, like, he gave you hope, you know, and everyone wanted to be Cully. I was just able to read where he was going because we played so much together. We created a good relationship uh, on and off the field. Here he is again. He's got Cullen. They'll never see which way he goes. And he just changed our attack. And, you know, the way we demolished Scotland and Carisbrook, as well as it was Cully. I think he scored six tries in his first two tests. As Fitzy would have said, you know, uh, back in the mid-90s when they burst on the scene, I, I don't think you'd seen that sort of athleticism before, and it was like, wow. Cullen! Christian Cullen! It's all over! Just that swerve, the, the way his speed, his uh, agility, the way he would always attack the line, really inspired the, the way a lot of teams play their rugby. Cullen for the counter-attack. He just had this huge desire to get out there and play and, and do the jersey proud. Well, none of us made the cut team. We obviously didn't work hard enough off the field to get some recruiting done to get enough votes. But if we talk about the three players, Brian Williams, Sir Brian Williams, John Olomu and Christian Cullen. Look, you had the responsibility, you talked about it before, Mills, of coming in after Christian Cullen as the All Black fullback. That is not, those are not easy shoes to fill, but there's no doubt he had a big impact on the game and he was something special. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the greatest um, uh, fullbacks in the world, I, in my eyes. Um, just the way he was able to play the game. I was fortunate enough to, wasn't sort of um, lucky enough to be in, a, in the same team as him, but, but to play against him um, and have a great man on the other side, um, you know, was something really special. But the way he just glided, you know, every time he sort of got the ball, and I think a lot of people already sort of mentioned it, um, you know, if something was going to happen regardless of where it was on the field, whether <laughs> it was, um, you know, right on his own line. And I think a wonderful memory for me as a youngster growing up is when he actually started in this, uh, and that sort of try he created from his, his end goal at, at Hong Kong. Um, so magical um, and, and, and a great, good man as well. Uh, very quiet, but um, certainly when he, um, you know, he made everything that he done on the field, he spoke, he, he spoke of volumes because he was just, he just carved things up. Look, we had a nickname for him in the team was Crowbar. It was the fact you needed a crowbar to get it out of his arms you know, to actually get your hands on the ball. But the reality was he was such a great player and it was a pleasure to have played with him because he didn't need a lot of help from time to time. In fact, a lot of the time he didn't need a lot of help, but he was certainly one of those guys that could create and do things that other players couldn't. 